everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Mother Nature has decided to show up here, and rain is sure to have an impact on this game. Ball security will come into play as both teams will have to deal with some very slippery conditions. It's the Broncos going up against the Buccaneers. So now let's head on over to rainy Raymond James Stadium in Tampa to welcome in our announcing crew of Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, it's something that Floridians are all too familiar with as the rain continues to fall here at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Denver Broncos and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at this Buccaneer ball club. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, we're in October now, so everything, everybody should be coming into form, shouldn't they? They really should, and what you have now is a full routine established about what you want to get done and full focus on the season. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They're led out by their quarterback out of Northwestern University. It's Trevor Simeon. This young man is near and dear to my heart. I saw him play in high school. Olympia High School in Orlando, Florida, where he was a prolific passer, real smooth in delivering the football. Had to sit a while at Northwestern before he got his chance to be a full-time starter. Showed his potential. Drafted late in the process by Denver. And now he's got a chance to be a starter in the NFL. Hey! Now a play fake here on first down. Surveying the field. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Clinton McDonald with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. First carry of the ball game now. It's C.J. Anderson. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. That draw play got blown up by the blitz of the defense. Ordinarily, that's exactly what you want. You want them to blitz and they go past you and you go past them for a big game. But in this situation, they hit him at the worst possible spot. Right exactly where you were running the draw. And he got in there and got him. I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. Now Simeon. He's going to loft one deep left side here. It's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. Pass interference. Defense. Certainly some contact there, and that's why there's a penalty on the defender for pass interference. So hard to time it up for a defender to hit the receiver when the ball arrives. Got there a little bit early on that one. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. the penalty Anderson shreds the tackle and a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47 yard line just a yard on the pickup there and it'll bring up a second and nine the offense on your screen now and our first look at CJ Anderson and what a look it's going to be making a name for himself rapidly running the football And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Here we go now. Green. Ah! Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Virgil Green is tied in the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. 
The starting 11 defensively for Tampa Bay. Brent Grimes is one of those cornerbacks who was overlooked coming out of college and plays each and every game with a chip on his shoulder. Offense in a little bit of a bind here. Nine yards to go on third down. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. Finding time. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. It's the Bucks' new signing from New York, Robert Ayers, with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback, because he had no chance to block him. Here's Riley Dixon now. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. Oh, it's a wobbler here. Now it's Crowder. Officially, that'll be marked down as just a 28-yard punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. So out come the Bucs now for their first drive. They'll be led out by their six foot four quarterback, the former number one overall pick in 2015, Jameis Winston. And this is a guy who cares totally about his team. He will do whatever it takes for a play to be successful and for his team to win. I've seen him become a lead blocker on running plays, even though I'm sure his coaches don't want him anywhere near that pile. First and ten, Winston. This one caught by Crowder. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Here's the offense and highlighted as a guy who gave himself his own nickname, the Dugginator. Brandon, you really can't nickname yourself, but if he keeps running at this level, he'll have plenty of good nicknames to choose from. Eight yards to go here on second down. Easy, 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 easy. Hey, ready. White 25. <laughs> now a second down throw for Winston. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And a look now at how the Broncos line up defensively. DeMarcus Ware may be a veteran, but he's not just a wily one. He's a terrific producer. Still extremely difficult to block when he's rushing the passer. Eight yards still remaining here on third down. Third down, Winston. Complete, he finds Bray. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. The first carry now for Doug Martin. And oh, his first carry, he loses the football. Holding offense. Yeah, that right there will set him back a bit on the offensive holding penalty. And you know who you want to pressure after a penalty like that? The guy who just committed the foul. You want to see if he's going to keep his head down or if he's going to get his head right back into the game. I'd send a blitz at him right away and see if he holds up. Martin. 
Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Again, it's Martin. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Four yards on the pickup there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. Jameis to throw it. And break. The tight end's got it. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Here's Martin. And he's going to be met at about the 43. A gain of three, second down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Now Jameis on second down. And Boyd has it over the middle. And he's brought down. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. All right, I'm doing my rudimentary math here. That's his third catch here in the first quarter. I don't know if it's just game plan or he's just finding his way open. And maybe a little of both. Looking for Crowder, and it's intercepted. It's Chris Harris with a pick, and he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. Okay, partner, no surprise to you. I'm going to look at this from the defensive perspective. In the rain, you have to be more cautious trying to cover passing routes. Why? The offense knows where they're going with the football. The receiver knows the route he's going to run. You have to make sure you keep your footing underneath you. And coming out now, the Broncos. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complementary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out, give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. He was trying to hit Thomas that time. That'll bring up second down. Still needing 10 yards. Second down. Now Simeon. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw in that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. Let's go! Three, two, three. Simeon. And Fowler's got it. 15 yards through the air and a first down. And a key number on that play, three. Third play of the drive, third down. 
spectacular catch turns into a first down. First down saves him from a three and out. run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. Full start, offense. Still second down. Looking to throw. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. Now the stiff arm created some space initially, but he's taken down not long after. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Third down, he'll drop to throw, and he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. Only 29 yards on the punt there, definitely not his best. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And in enemy territory last time through the interception, we'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How, how much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try and take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. While we're not playing three yards in a cloud of dust football anymore, I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion and both sides trying to get to the football and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. And off comes to Martin. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. And you would have to think an obvious passing situation here on third and nine. One receiver to the left is Evans. On third down, Winston. He finds his target. It's Crowder. 
A gain of 19 in picking up the first. So we've reached the end of a fairly even first quarter of play. It's a tight game here early. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. This presentation of the NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Bucks in possession of the football as we begin the second quarter. And they've got it here with a first down. They run, Martin, and he's going to bull his way forward to the 48. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Good, strong run against the 3-4 set, and that 3-4, you've got to have you guys up front eat up a lot of blocks. The guy playing over the center that knows, he usually has to take on double teams, but when you're able to successfully move him, you're often able to get some yardage, and that's when linebackers have to clean up and make tackles. They run it again with Martin, and he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. The play clock's running down. Martin. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. They'll try to throw now, Winston. Jackson's got it over the middle. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll lead here to a third down. He had time, was able to survey the field and find a soft spot in that zone coverage. And that's where it gets difficult for a defender, Brandon. You go to your spots on the field that you have to cover, and when the offense finds an area that you're not in, that's where they throw the football. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Ready, blue ready. Time running out here on the play clock. They just do get the playoff. Now Winston. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And Evans calls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Bucs have taken the lead. Well, there was a little extra pressure with that one because it was third down. He didn't care. He snagged it with one hand like it was routine. The key is to make a play in a tough situation. Doesn't matter how. And in this case, one-handed gets it done. Terrific play for us to watch. Roberto Aguayo now for the point after. And that one gives the Bucks a 7 to nothing lead. ready for the kickoff and here we go it's in the air the return comes now from Jordan Norwood and a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30 yard line 
And Denver getting set to take the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over, You didn't I turn guess. it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. And wow, now we've got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something bad to be gained from it. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. A wise move there, looked like nobody open. Now second down. And on second and 10 now. Shift together here from the D line. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. And all the way home for a Bronco score. Emmanuel Sanders, his first touchdown on the year. And the Broncos are an extra point away from tying the football game. And there they got him the ball, just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right, RAC? Run after catch, and he loves that, and he's going to carry that in at contract time. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And that last drive, a long drive. But not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. How many times do we say in this game is speed kills and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Play clock winding down. They run again on first down, Martin. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. Second down following the run. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Second down, Winston. Bringing it in, Jackson left side. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Eight yards on the pickup there, and it moves the sticks. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. So here we go, first and 10 now. And a 10th carry here for Martin. And he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. 
Really good, solid run right there. And they did it from a four wide receiver set. And if you're an offensive coordinator, they used to tell people, hey, we're going to throw the football. Now they use four receivers on the field to spread things out, give them more running lanes and more options. And also, it usually takes the bigger defenders off the field, makes the defense lighter and easier to run against. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Now Martin, trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and no more. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in the old days were often outside linebackers. They just pushed them forward because they wanted them to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running backs quicker than ever before. Now Jameis on second down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. The Broncos say they have it. They do. All these years we've been watching the game, I start to get the sense that whenever it rains out, those guys who have to touch the ball and carry it, they're extremely resentful about that weather. Yeah, I'm just happy I'm not resentful that we have a roof over our heads. I know that much. Yeah, maybe we won't fumble our play sheets here <laughs> as we just saw the fumble happen on the field. The Buccaneers defense making their way back out onto the field. Last drive, touchdown, surrendered. Here, see if they can stop them. It's always a constant battle of letting the last series go, good or bad, but especially bad. Give up a touchdown. Okay, forget the finger pointing. Forget the blame. Go back out and play the defense you know you're capable of and help your team out. And probably look to the leaders, as always. As always. <laughs> they're they're going to be the ones going to grab some people and say, all right, let's do this thing. Hang on now. Hopper. Hopper. They start the drive with Anderson. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. In on the stop, Bradley McDougal. A one-yard gain can look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. Now Simeon. The complete into the hands of Fowler. 15 yards through the air and a first down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. 11 yards on the pickup, and it'll give the Broncos a first down. And a nice pitch and catch to pick up the reception against man coverage. Both of them read how much yardage they needed, figured what they had to do, and were able to beat the man coverage for the completion. And now we're circling here around the two-minute warning. This is a setup play, trying to get one last one in before the clock warning. Back now, as I search for my cue card here, there we go. Coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis from our first half of play. Well read. Oh, thank you. Thomas, the lone receiver left. Simeon. And this one complete to Virgil Green. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. It's 
So the offense has it first and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. He's got time. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. So second and ten here. to throw again and caught right side green and he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score Virgil Green his third touchdown now on the year and the Broncos are in for six boy it's nice to have that big reliable target you can go to each and every time a lot of people see that position as a fallback throw it to them when all else fails not at all this guy can make plays and that's exactly what he just did yeah play here for a touchdown McManus now for the extra point and he's got it it's now a 14-7 ball game After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And this will be a touchback. Last year would have come out to the 20. This year they'll move it out to the 25-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession. they got his man complete, and all the way down to the 29. It's a big play there for the Buccaneers. 46 yards. So let's go ahead and add to the difficulties of guys trying to cover receivers. They've got to deal with speed, shiftiness, all that stuff. But how about when they have height and length and deep downfield, you throw the ball up in the air, that's how they uncover at the end of a route, by being able to go up over the top and make a big catch. Jameis now on first down. And that will be caught, but out of bounds. Out of bounds, ruled incomplete here. I know for us it's fun, and it's not so much fun for the rookie receivers when we see them coming into the league and we're going to training camps. You see them working on getting two feet down instead of one. But the best ones train in college trying to get two down instead of one, so the transition's a little bit less. In this case, though, wasn't able to complete it anyway. A second down throw for Winston. And his throw here is incomplete. The target that time was Vincent Jackson. And it's third down. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Third down, Winston. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. He dropped it. Couldn't hang on in the end zone. So no six points incomplete. In this situation, it's really tough to figure out how to defend because they have plenty of room to still take deep shots at the end zone as they just did there. Yet at the same time, you've got to be ready for the short throw. In this case, when you see the cue that they're going for the end zone, retreat and make sure you have a way to play forward, back towards the receiver, and have a chance to bat the ball away as they did there. 
So a good kick there, and they wrap up the drive by putting three on the board. And you know, let's face it, you're not always going to come away with six. Defense in the NFL are just too good. But you've got to come away with something. And there, they get three. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one taken from the seven. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. There he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects it to at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first-half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. No gain on the play there. Second down. Well, at least he was able to break that initial contact or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? He made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. Ten yards still left on second down. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. So we come upon halftime with the visiting Broncos taking the lead to the locker room. As we will toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. At the end of the first quarter, completion will be made here to a wide open man. And that connection will lead to a gain of 19 yards. Same drive, quick pass and catch by Evans. And it's caught for the touchdown. Bucks with the early advantage. Now it's early in the second. Here the pass goes to the sidelines. And he'll go in for the touchdown. We're brand new at seven. Buccaneers line up at the 41. Jackson's got the catch, but fumbles here. Now after the fumble, out of the shotgun, pass will be completed. And he caps off the six-play drive with the score. That puts them up by a touchdown. So that's it for us. We'll go back now to Tampa for the start of the second half. All right, Larry, thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. Now it's Crowder. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start the third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Personal foul. Defense. Got the hand caught up in the grill of the face mask. 15-yard penalty. So tough for a defender. You're trying so hard to make a play, and the way that these offensive guys can move around, sometimes your hand gets into the wrong place. Ready! Blue ready! First down, Winston. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. It's Chris Harris with a pick. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. I tell you, Brandon, it seems like this guy's been all over the field so far. That's his second interception of the game. And so much of playing defense in the NFL, especially when it comes to defending the pass, is all about positioning and technique. And this is fantastic work on both fronts there. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. Hey, 
The third quarter starts with a run from Anderson. And all the way home for a Bronco score. C.J. Anderson, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Now McManus for the extra point. It's good, and it's 21-10. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This is taken near the 13. Then he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things work well for us. But sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Fresh set of downs here. Now a run with Martin. Stays on his feet and able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. Second down, Winston. They set up the screen to Martin. Pass the 20. And touchdown, Tampa Bay. Doug Martin, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Bucs have made this a one-score game. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Hey, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. And they will line up now for the two-point try. Winston to throw for it. And now the pressure gets there, and he goes down. So he couldn't get rid of the football, and that deficit stays right where it is. Well, partner, since this new two-point rule came into play, offenses spend a lot more time working on it. That means the defenses are doing the exact same thing. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. We get a glance at the Buccaneer defense as they file into position. And they gave up a touchdown last drive. You kind of need to hit the reset button after every touchdown given up, Charles. I love that. And, and the way that you phrased it is perfect because from series to series... And now the Bucs deciding to take a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Pop 
possible run anticipation. Here's the D-line sandwiches together. Simeon. Catch here, left side, Thomas. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make it second and short. And there, the man coverage, not good enough, partner, and they're able to complete the pass. Excellent recognition of the man coverage, and they found the guy who could win downfield. In the backfield is Anderson. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Big sack on second down. Now the offense needs to convert here on third. Now Simeon. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Winston out of and Winston lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. The fumble, but they're able to maintain possession. Now it's second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. It'll be a pickup of 13 on the play, and that'll bring up a third and one. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it, and boy, the reward was there. A big, big pickup, and guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. They'll run it. Here's Martin. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one. You know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. They come out here in the eye. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, 
it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks, but doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there, and there we saw a completion. And he stopped immediately there. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. No matter what defense is called versus a running play, linebackers are telling the defensive guys up front, you take care of the offensive line, keep us uncovered, let us run to the ball, we'll make big plays. Well, that paid off there. All the guys up front, the big fellas, they controlled the five offensive linemen. That allowed the linebackers to just see the openings, sprint through the gap, and snuff that play out in a hurry. On third and one, here's Winston. Open man, it's Stacker. You give him five yards there, and it's enough for the first. He went full scale, loose, flexible, finding a way to catch the ball in some traffic for a key first down. Yeah, really a nice job of adjusting to the ball in the air. Not the most accurate of throws, but able to adjust and make the grab. They go play action here on first down. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. On second down, Martin. And room there to work it inside the 25. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Third and short yardage, Winston. Jackson's got it over the middle. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. One man on the backfield, that's Martin. And the play clock's running down. And they'll give it to him here. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. Time running out here on the play clock. Another tote for the workhorse, Martin. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him seven on the play, and they'll be faced with a third in inches. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. The first carry here for Jaquiz Rogers. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Go. 
It'll be first and goal when we come back. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's Buccaneer football, but they've got work to do. They find themselves behind here to start the fourth quarter. Oh, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. They come out here in the eye. First and goal at the three-yard line now. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. Now, that was a good job by the defense swarming to the football. And you know it's no cinch that you're going to be able to get the ball into the end zone against them. They're number two against the run. So what's an offensive coordinator to do? Check your playlist. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Play clock winding down. They'll try to throw now. Winston. And he pulls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Mike Evans with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Bucs have taken the lead here in the fourth. I know we often laugh and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game, and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. Winston to throw for it. That's caught at the two. And he will not get there. He comes up short. And they're unable to push this lead to a field goal as it'll remain a one-point game. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one taken from the seven. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find oh, one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Robert Ayers in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Call it a gain of 13 yards on the play. And they're going to have a third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed-out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And this is caught. Demarius Thomas. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. But we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. 
I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Show some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. Now Simeon, and caught right side, Green. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to stay up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really <laughs> nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Touchdown offense. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Here we go. Three, nine, ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Green's got it over the middle. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. to throw now on first down. Left side here to Sanders. And he's brought down after a good game. That one goes for 24 yards. The offense lining up first and ten. Here's Anderson. He showed off the athletic juke, but it didn't buy him a whole lot of real estate. A gain of three, second down. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. On second down, Anderson. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to bring up a third down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. In the backfield is Anderson. He'll get the football here. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed, and that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. And McManus able to put it through. And with that, they will move ahead by two here in the fourth. So the drive here ends with a field goal, and that does give them the lead, but this one is still a long ways from over. And you love to be able to look up at the scoreboard and see that you're out in front. But then you take one look across the field and see that offense is raring to come back out. And you think, I don't know, the field goals are going to be enough to get us home. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. And now the Buccaneers offense gets set to head back onto the field. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, 
they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't scoreboard watch. Everyone does it to some extent, but you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. One man of the backfield, that's Martin. He's going to get the football. And not much doing. He'll get this only up to about the 36. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. So the offense looking at a second and eight. One receiver to the left is Evans. Now Winston. And Boyd has it over the middle. And he's brought down after a good game. A nice gain of 21 yards. Let's discuss now this performance as it relates to the last one. You know, a week ago, and we, we saw it, some pinpoint accuracy. He's displaying that again. That was a fun film session for us, wasn't it? They got to kick back and watch him work and... What we saw was a confident leader, a guy in control, making excellent throws at times. And he's brought that with him in this ball game as well. And I'm starting to think that he's starting to feel like, yeah, I've got this thing down pat. And I think the team will come along with him. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Jameis to throw it. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. A good pick up there at 22. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator is looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They've got a first down in field goal range already. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. They come up in an offset on. First down, here's the run with Martin. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. The all-pro Von Miller there on the tackle. But it was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. One receiver left, easy, easy, three easy, to the easy. right. Ready, blue ready. Go. He's back to throw. Jackson's got it over the middle. Now the Broncos are going to take a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Red zone opportunity. Easy, 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 easy. Ready, blue lady. So the chain gang now done for the drive ball on the 10, first and goal. Yep. And now the Broncos will burn another timeout here. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Fifty, 
One man on the backfield, that's Martin. Second and goal as the offense looks to try to punch it in. And a short pickup there down to about the nine. Now hang on here, timeout called, timeout called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. This will be play number eight on the drive. It's third and goal. Easy, 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 easy. Easy, easy, wait, wait, wait. Here is Martin on third and goal. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. And three yards on the carry there as his defense holds strong and takes it to fourth and goal. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to take the lead here in the final minute. And Aguayo's kick is good. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. All right, so time to reset here. It's a huge kick there, gives them the lead, but they've got to be careful that their celebrations aren't a little too premature. You're exactly right about that because there still is time for the other guys to run a few plays and get into field goal position. So this defense is going to need to come up with one final stop if they're going to get out of here with a victory. And a nice return sets them up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Shift together here from the D-line. shy of midfield at the 48. Oh, now, Call it a gain of five. And they're going to face a third down. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.